Hello, powerful one. Welcome to this edition of Inner Growth to Sezwa Elimited. We were discussing the issue of self-love yesterday. We made it quite clear that if you did not have love for yourself, that there was no way you could give love to the world. We talked about even having a relationship with the infinite, that everything begins with us, with you. You have to tee off the golf ball from your own base. Life actually extends to you and from you. So all the flow of power, all the flow of love, all the flow of wisdom, of knowledge comes to you from the source. And then from you, it goes back to the source. But you cannot take it directly to the source. You have to take it through channels. So that is where humanity, the animals, the plants become the basis of extending love to the divine. But when knowledge, when power, when love flows from the source to us, and we are not living in the awareness of self-love, we are not living in love, loving our own selves, we will misinterpret because we have to add something of our own into what comes to us. It's like a fluid that gets into a cup that is unwashed. The color of that cup we mix with that fluid, it becomes tainted and sometimes no longer good enough for consumption. It is no longer the same substance that came from its source. That is the meaning of evil. Because nobody actually invents anything in this world. We color what already exists. What we give to people in form of thought, action and ways are all energies. And remember that law of thermodynamic that Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. So you are not creating anything the way you are doing evil. What you are doing is that you are interpreting what shouldn't have been interpreted. And then you are sending that interpretation out to the world. It is no longer working to you. It is what you have been able to comprehend on the basis of your background, on the basis of your training, on the basis of how you were structured by your world. That is evil. But for people who cleanse themselves of all external factors, of all external communications, of all external miscommunications, when this energy comes into their system, they have nothing to add to it and they have nothing to take out of it. They just let it flow through them, untainted. These are the people we call holy because they see themselves as agents of the divine. They are not acting on their own accord. They have nothing to give. They have nothing to take from anybody. All they do is circulate themselves, circulate what comes into them to the world. So when they look at you doing things, talking, they are not interpreting what you're doing. They are just observing it. They are not allowing it to affect them. It is when you allow things people say or do to affect you that you interpret because your mind has added some things to it and you have given it a coloration, you are giving it a meaning. And every meaning you give to what is neutral, what is outside of you is always in accordance with who you are at that time of you observing that thing. It's not always the right meaning. But for you, it is the right meaning, but for the world, it is the wrong meaning. We are going to talk more about this when we come back from the break. I am Osezwa Anthony Elimi Hill. You know me. I am in the game of helping you grow from inside out. That is the dream. <laughs> Let's continue it this way. We are living in an ocean of ideas, an ocean of energies. I got energies now, not energy. You know why I'm using energies? Because there is only one energy that flows from the source through the hierarchies to us humans and to all the plants and the animals and mineral worlds. But you see, at the level of humanity, this energy begins to experience coloration, begins to experience distortions. So on the basis of these colorations and distortions, we no longer use the word energy. We're not talking about energies. Because right now, the single function that the source energy is supposed to have performed has been 
giving multiple functions because of the nature of their colorations and the nature of their distortion. Hence, we see energies. Now, all these energies that are colored, they are now seen as good or bad. Now, otherwise, the idea of good or bad should not even come into place because nothing should be good, nothing should be bad. We now name that energy that seems to be closely aligned to the original purpose of being as good. Why we label the energy that is completely misaligned or slightly misaligned from the source energy and purpose as evil. Evil simply means that something has had its love content degraded. When the love content of anything is degraded, even by as little as 0.1%, it becomes evil. Evil also has grades. Within evil, you have good, you have bad, and you have worse, and even the worst. So when you now talk about judgment, people who are sitting in judgment over others, they are sitting on the pedestal of tolerant evil, and they are passing judgment on those whose evil are seen to be intolerable. But they are one and the same. This is the sole reason when they brought the woman caught in the act of adultery to the Lord Jesus Christ, he said to them, Let he who has no sin cast the first stone. Because the actions surrounding the singular action of the lady were all not aligned with the divine purpose. Therefore, they were not in a position to judge. When it comes to judgment, you are interpreting. When it comes to condemnation and criticism, you are interpreting. What we are inching towards, we are focused on becoming, is humans who do not pass judgment, who do not criticize, who do not condemn. We just take people as we see them. We take circumstances as we see them. But this is difficult. But it has to be done. It starts with a commitment to say, this is my goal. Set a goal for yourself. Now, when we talk about goal setting, in our modern world, goal setting is seen as what you want to achieve in the exoteric aspects of life, in career, in relationships, in finance, etc. This is what we see as goal setting. We often do not remember that the highest goal of all, which when set, it will pull all the other goals without even thinking about them into place. It is the goal of your humanity. You set that goal and say, I intend to return to my original state. I intend to return to how I was conceived and designed by the source. That is the goal of my identity. That is the goal of my life. And it is when your identity connects with that identity of the original, the identity that the divine has conceived for you that is still inside of you somewhere but is missing when you connect with that when your mind gets to that state in which it is so placid it's no longer being churned by the interpretations of the external world the mind becomes super still the surface of the mind which is always a pool a turbulent pool but this time it becomes placid and still the surface of the pool becomes a mirror then you become still and when you look into that mirror at that time, what you are going to see is divinity. But you are looking at yourself, but what you see is divinity. You will realize that you are not what the world conceived you to be. You are not what your parents conceived you to be. You will remember that what your parents donated to you was the physical body. And then with that physical body came the five senses. With the five senses came karma. And memories of all the experiences you have ever had and they have ever had the archetypal structure of existence then at this time when you look at that pool what you are going to see is yourself without all of these interpretations without all of these attachments and then you are going to realize that you and the supreme the source are one now is this now clear to you bible christians the verse that says be still and know that I am God. The one that is being asked to be still is the mind. And you, as soul, are being asked, walk towards making your mind still so that you can know God. Until mind stops being harassed by thoughts, by emotions, by all the colorations of energy that are flying around. 
we won't be able to get there. This is why I have advised us that we should make a declaration. Define our lives. Define your life. Creation, preservation, and transformation are the key to getting your humanity off the ground, to moving it further. As we move along in the ocean of existence, at some point we keep moving freely in the midst of all these ideas, all of these thoughts. We get to a point where we are not even allowed to move further. Why? Because the ideas we are picking, we are picking them in because they come in front of us, we pick them. It gets to a point we are subconsciously picking ideas because at this time, it's no longer us that are picking the ideas. The ideas we picked originally, they begin to attract their family members in the space. So we are not aware of all these things. Now, these ideas are the ones that come together and rule us. That's why we say that at least when you wake up in the morning, put your house in order. Let the agents within your system know that you have woken up that you have come into the office, get into the office of your being that morning and set an agenda for the day. Guys, the goal remains the same. We are going after our original identity. You see it? Now, they don't know what the original identity is. Even you don't know it, but you have an idea of what it is like. Okay? So as you move on, when you come across things that you know are derailing, your soul will tell that these things are not right. They might come in cozy, sweet, and attractive, seductive, but your soul knows that these things are not the right things. You have to be aware and conscious enough to say no to these things. But when you don't say no to them and you pull them in, those things you have pulled in, those ideas, those data that you have pulled in, they will now, having settled in, being welcomed, they begin to pull data that are in line with them, that are congruent with them into your world. And before you know what is happening, you are living a life that isn't actually right for you and you cannot stop it and it becomes an addictive life. It is that addictive life we are working to rise above. We are not fighting the life. We are simply saying, okay, we have lived this life up until now. It is time to go beyond it and go for something else. It's just like you going on a trip and you stopped at a point. The vehicle stops and you have fun. You went to buy things, buy bananas, all those things. You interact with the people around and then you hear the horn, pom, pom, pom. It's time to move on. You go and enter the bus quietly and the bus drives away. You leave the euphoria, the beauty, the attractions that are in that stopover behind and you keep going. But there are people who do not heed the honking of the horn. Hit them as painful. They cannot leave the transit town behind and they stay back. They no longer hear the honking of the horn because the vehicle has moved. And then they are not satisfied with that place because that is not the original destination. Therefore, they cannot be satisfied. But they allow the attractions to keep driving them on. So this is the game we are trying to put an end to. To end the attraction and seduction of negativity. It's not easy, but we have to be Focus. That is where discipline is required. Be disciplined and know the life you desire and stick to it in your thought. Every moment of your time, these things are required of you. So the game of our being is to know in the midst of all the data that are flying around us, that are seducing us, to know which of them is the enemy data and we let them go. And the battle is not external, it is inside here. Every moment you are rejecting data, you are saying no to data. And you are saying yes to positive data. That is the game of our lives. That is what we have been asked to do. All you need to say is yes to that which is acceptable in line with your dream. And no to that which is not acceptable in line also with your dream. It is about being vigilant. Vigilance is all the work we have to do. It's not so difficult. We can achieve it. Use your sleeping times. Use your waking hours and use every time you are studying anything to connect with your being. Rightly choose the materials that you read. Rightly choose the company that you relate with. And rightly choose the thoughts that you entertain and the feelings that you allow. And the actions that you welcome. That's the game. Thank you.